Welcome everyone to the first webinar in our LFX series, uh, introducing the LFX toolkit. Uh, today, we're going to be diving into the LFX insights tool. Um, so you'll learn today how you can learn to bridge data to make more informed decisions about your project's performance beyond the code. And just to get us started, a few kind of housekeeping. Um, I'm sure we're all familiar with these Zoom calls and, and how to leverage um, chat and webinars, but we will be monitoring the chat as well as the Q&A uh, very regularly throughout this. We will try to address some questions, um, you know, live, excuse me, uh, some questions live in the chat, but we'll also have plenty of time at the end to uh, really dive into any, any more questions that, that will come up throughout. So please ask away in chat as well as in the Q&A feature and we will be on those threads. I wanna introduce uh, the, the team that's here with you today for our webinar. Um, so Shubra Carr will be the presenter. Um, so he's gonna walk us through the LFX Insights tool, uh, giving us some context around LFX overall, and then diving into a demo of, um, of the capabilities. Uh, he is our CTO and GM of products, and so he's very, very closely aligned with these uh, the tools that we've built out here. Uh, myself, as well as our technical product manager, Sachin Gupta, will be moderating. So we will be on the chat addressing any questions, we will be fielding the questions for the Q&A at the end. And if anything else comes up, we will be there uh, to support as well. So with that, uh, I am going to go ahead and hand things over to Shubra so that he can dive into what we're all here for today and talk through our LFX toolkit and specifically LFX insights. Thank you. Uh, thank you for attending everyone. Um, so. You know, we have been working on this product, uh, particularly the Linux Foundation engineering team for almost a couple of years now. And, um, you know, as we are bringing this LFX chain of tools, uh, the primary purpose why we build these tools are to, you know, build more sustainable open source projects during the entire life cycle. So how can we actually help these projects succeed, right? Um, you know, Again, it will be preaching to the choir if we say the world runs on open source, uh, but the critical projects, uh, they need more than you know a source control system a version control systems or a one off tool here or there. Uh, you know, you need help uh, growing these projects and become those category leaders, um, you know, over time. So projects, the first thing, you know, is that, you know, you need to have a finger on the pulse of the entire ecosystem, not just the code, right? And there are tools that, um, you know, there should be tailored to the key stakeholders, right? The stakeholders could be maintainers, contributors, community managers, uh, outreach committee members, the governing board, marketeers, and much more. So over the last decade or so, right, the Linux Foundation and, you know, all its sister foundations as an entity have evolved a proven methodology uh, to help address these challenges and you know transform you know early stage projects fledging projects into those category leaders right so the lfx tool chain that we're going to talk about it essentially operate, operationalizes this uh, approach uh, or, or this methodology and we have a set of two tools uh, to you know help there are those are built to facilitate every aspect of the open source development life cycle um, so there are 12 tools in the tool chain. And as we go through this year, next year, we'll be adding more and more of these tool chains into the kit. Um, today, we're going to focus primarily on insights, but just to give you a super high level in, uh, you know, headline here, uh, security is the one that we have built to look at vulnerabilities in the projects, you know, software bill of materials, license uh, compliance and whatnot. Uh, we have an individual dashboard, which essentially is serving, creating a community profile, um, also primarily uh, meant for users to, you know, get their badges, whether those are training certification badges, manage their code contributions, um, and, and so on. Uh, obviously, uh, many projects have been using tools like ECCLA uh, for managing, you know, uh, contributor uh, license agreements. Uh, whenever they are contributing code as an individual or as a corporate. 
Um, we last year we had in the same toolkit we had launched mentorship. Uh, most Linux Foundation projects are already leveraging this platform to grow the community. We have a crowdfunding uh, tool as well, uh, which projects are leveraging to raise money and funds and spend it uh, where they feel fit, whether it be on infrastructure development, documentation, travel events, whatnot. Um, you know, we have a landscape uh, utility, which lets you, you know, look at the entire ecosystem in terms of like, you know, the commercial support, the vendor support, the partner support, the tooling available for that open source project. Um, we have a community events uh, tool that we built. Uh, essentially, if you're running your own project branded meetups, uh, how do you actually raise money for those meetups? How do you effectively, uh, you know, run different chapters? Uh, we have a training portal where, you know, you have 40 plus training courses and uh, certifications available to grow the skill set. And uh, finally, these two project control center is uh, something we are launching late this quarter. Uh, this will be focusing on automation of all IT resources, uh, legal resources, your project uh, challenges uh, that you face when you're you know, bootstrapping a project or day-to-day -day maintenance or you want to grow those, right? And for our members supporting member companies, we are also building an organization dashboard so that you can actually see your impact on all open source projects, at least those projects that are within the, you know, our home and find their home in the Linux Foundation. So today we are primarily going to focus in on insights. Uh, this entire platform has been created by the, our internal engineering team. And uh, we obviously had a lot of partnerships, like we leveraged others open source projects as is the norm. And so in insights, uh, you know, fundamentally, right? Uh, why did we build it? So unless we start measuring how we are doing on those projects, there isn't much room for improvement. Uh, but the measurement often in open source projects is, you know, the visibility is limited to an individual developer or a contributor or to a maintainer. How can we get an entire ecosystem view, right? So if I look into, <clears throat> you know, you'll see some uh, stats on the right and those stats are growing. Uh, these are the numbers. We, we al already instrumented 375 projects and, uh, you know, every other day we are instrumenting more and more projects that find home at the uh, LF. Uh, but so far we have been looking at like code velocity, right? Uh, there could be lines of code, like we already have like 1.15 billion lines of code, but how much is changing on a weekly basis, right? Like how much gets added, how much gets deleted? Uh, the contributing developers, like is that contribution count growing, right? Like are our communities growing? Um, where do they work at? Like who are our supporting companies, right? So we really found out we were close to like you know, 12,000 plus companies uh, and these developers, these contributors spread are spread across these companies. It really gives you an idea of how uh, distributed and how diverse our community is. Uh, we have so far instrumented, you know, 11,900 repositories and that count is going up. Uh, we are looking at like, you know, annually 8.9 million commits, you know, more than a million pull requests, more than a million builds, uh, you know, issues that are logged in Jira, GitHub issues, whatnot, you know, Bugzilla, uh, container downloads, right? Like uh, from your registries, how, how on the downstream adoption, how many people are pulling down those images, right? We have a variety of collaboration tools, whether it's on chat, on email, uh, what are the formal groups, right? Where are they communicating? What is the activity there? So great metrics, there's much more to look here, but fundamentally, uh, what our projects have been, uh, we found out our, our projects are not, you know, bound to a particular stack as is the norm in open source. We are distributed by nature and in our choice of tooling. We could be running our projects on GitHub, GitLab, Git, get it. Uh, we could be using everything from a Slack to a rocket chat to hip chat to you name it, like to a discourse to communicate. You could be maintaining documentation at 15 different places. And that preserving that choice is important um, because you know, not one slight uh, size fits all for all projects, but how do we really get the insights with this distributed nature, right? So unless we get those insights, uh, there, there are some problems everybody's trying to solve as the project, right? Like, yeah, our project's code velocity is slow, 
Uh, we have a big community of contributors, but where are those bottlenecks, right? Uh, our development pipeline is clogged. We really don't have an idea of where exactly is it clogged. Is it in you know the, uh, the workload on the maintainers? Is it clogged somewhere else? Uh, we are able, you know, are unable to identify who our top contributors are, right? And uh, not just contributors in terms of code, but also influencers in our communities, right? It could be particular individuals, it could be particular companies. And, you know, many times, you know, we put out great code, but our user adoption kind of is not matching, um, you know, our code velocity, but we don't really know it's just a lack of awareness. It's the code quality. What really are these issues, right? So this is our effort to give you those kind of insights. That's why we build this product. Okay. So different personas, right? One tool, and we have tried to build different views for different personas, primarily for the maintainers and the project uh, leads. We are getting trying to give you a 360 degree view, right? Uh, there are fundamental problems you want to solve. You want to avoid maintainer burnout. Uh, you know, those are the key people in your community who are merging your PRs, reviewing your code. Uh, contributions come in left and right, but you know, the last thing you want to do is you know burn out your maintainers. And longer term, how do you ensure your project health, security, and sustainability, right? Like security for many projects means sustainability. Uh, for the outreach people in those projects, your evangelists, right? How do you attract more members, more funding, and grow your community? And uh, awareness, right? Um, again, unless you, uh, unless you are able to measure how your campaigns are performing, uh, you won't be able to you know, improve there. Uh, for our, all our supporting members, corporate sponsors, for them, you know, a lot of these contributors are working uh, with a full-time employment at your companies. So how do you, you know, measure your impact, right? Uh, how do you uh, not just evaluate or like, you know, encourage uh, like your employees making contributions to certain projects, but also how do you encourage that behavior? And again, also in terms of when you are investing into particular projects, how do you find out, you know, which other member companies are sponsoring those projects, are participating to what level? And fundamentally for all developers, open source developers in our community, like the goal is like where to focus your efforts on, right? Um, you know, showcase your leadership. You know, you have a lot of active contributors, maintainers, there are leaderboards, there are some people who put in heroic efforts, uh, but like, you know, we need to grow equitably. So, and uh, the other part is like, you know, once you make a contribution, how do you manage that affiliation, right? Is that contribution on your own behalf? Is it on behalf of your company? How do you measure that impact? So these are the primary personas who can start using the tool today. Um, List features, you know, this list is going to be endless, but just as a snapshot, you know, we have diff, a multi-dimensional, a 360 degree view. It's multi-dimensional re reporting that you get out of the tool. Uh, we have uh, utilities for contributors to manage their affiliations and their identity. Uh, we have created these leaderboards or contributor boards. So every project can slice dice the data, maybe use those for elections as an example. Um, there's shared innovation, whatever instrumentation we build, whatever dashboards we build for a single project, every project gets it, right? Regardless of like how big or small they are. Uh, we have telemetry from multiple data sources. And then we are also, as we are increasing the ecosystem visibility, we are looking into different areas, right? Not just code velocity. What is your mar marketing impact? Just as an example. Okay. So today we support, uh, you know, 15, around 15 data sources and it's growing in the, by the next quarter, we'll probably be around, you know, 18 or 19 data sources. So the ones, you know, these are like fairly evident, like from source control systems, like, you know, anything Git-based, Gerrit-based, GitHub, uh, from issue tracking, if you're using Bugzilla, GitHub issues or Jira for tracking all your issues. Um, you know, if your collaboration is primarily happening on groups.io, uh, that's where majority of our community mailing lists are, um, or mailman uh, for a lot of other projects. Uh, if you're looking at continuous integration, CI, like we today have instrumented Jenkins from a registry perspective, your you know distribution channel, we have got Docker Hub for earned media, uh, particularly if you're doing press releases, content syndication, uh, SEO, we have instrumented session, uh, documentation, uh, confluence, you know, chat rooms. We started with Slack, found out 
communities like Hyperledger use Rocket Chat. We added those, and there are more coming. So I think the the next set of wave you will see will be an increased focus on social media. So Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, we are increasing our uh, focus on different type of build systems. You know, GitHub Actions is coming up a lot. Travis CI, Circle CI, GitLab, uh, also our mailing list. So they're so distributed. Now we are going into Google Groups, right? So this will keep growing, but just wanted to give you a snapshot of what is supported today and what's coming relatively soon. Uh, just talking about affiliations, right? This is probably the most important part of like, how do we, you know, attest uh, credits for your contribution? So there are multiple ways this attestation is done. Um, all these project data sources that you see here, that's where we are getting our data from. However, these data sources could be GitHub, it could be Git, it could be a mailing list, it could be a Slack server, it could be a conference document, it could be your social media board. Uh, everybody uses a number of different IDs. There's no sing, you know, unique way to stitch these together into like saying that, okay, this was the same person. Um, so what we have done here is, um, we are already like instrumenting and getting this data into our leaderboards. However, we have three ways to you know uh, update the affiliation. Uh, the number one way for particularly for uh, projects who are primarily you know PR driven, like uh, there's a Git DM methodology. It was not a new concept. It was started by the Linux kernel years back, and you know was uh, used by CNCF as an example as well for their affiliations. So you know if you are making a pull request, like you know your contributor data and you know in, sometimes you might be you know contributing that code as yourself in your own individual capacity sometimes you want to that code contribution to be attributed to your employer which is essentially a corporate contribution um, so you can essentially issue a PR and that git DM um, repository is what we essentially integrate with our leaderboards the second way to do it is, uh, which we were doing from a long time, was have community admins. Essentially, every project has a set of community leaders, and they essentially know who the uh, who the top contributors in those projects are, and they can manage the affiliations on behalf of the community. Uh, but to make it really scale, we went with a self-serve approach. So we have built a UI, and that UI is available in uh, your community profile, where you can, as an individual contributor, that contributor could be in any area. It doesn't just have to be a code contribution. We discover your contributions, and then you can you know, self-attest there. Um, you know, how do you want your contribution to show up in these community leaderboards, right? And many people change jobs, right? Uh, so how can you keep that continuity? And while you are earning badges, those badges could be, you know, speaking at events, that could badges could be with your training certification, that could be with your skill set, or you being a mentor, those badges are also displayed in those same profiles, okay? So we'll quickly jump into a demo. Uh, let me share my screen here. So how do you get to insights, first of all? Um, so there are multiple ways. I think the easiest way is to do insights.lfx.dev. That gets you to the home page. Here, uh, you will see there are n number of projects. Like we have a structure of cards. So projects which are you know clustered together in project groups, you will see you know they are grouped together like Academy Software Foundation. It's essentially a project group. However, there could be a standalone project called as Bitcoin Core. There could be a group uh, of projects for if you look at CNCF, uh, you know Cloud Native Computing Foundation um, that probably has 70 projects underneath it. So that's how we, this is the modality that we have. Now within uh, a particular foundation, if you are just looking at, uh, let's take the use case here of um, Hyperledger. Um, if I jump to the entire Hyperledger project group, you, um, you know, we have high level statistics that we have built to track like the performance of that entire group of projects holistically. And then you also have like, you know, that data broken down project by project by project. So right here, out of the gate, we are 60, uh, seeing, you know, um, 15 odd projects that are under Hyperledger and then they have a lab environment as well. And many projects, they create like a commons, right? Like which are like shared utilities. So you can instrument those and look 
particularly as those. But these are kind of aggregated numbers. These are, again, snapshots in time. So, you know, if you are looking at a particular project, let's say, you know, if I want to go and look at a particular project, Aries as an example, you get that specific filtered view for the project. However, if you really want to look at from a group summary, we aggregate the data across that entire project group. Okay, so let's look at some interesting statistics. So we talked about source code contributions, right? So, um, you know, if you start looking at commits, uh, right? That's that's where we start. And uh, the way we have been working these is like we, you know, start tracking those commits, where regardless of the source they're coming in from, and these are all time filtered, the default range is always 90 days, you can go back and, you know, look into last year, last two years, last five years. Um, you know, it picks relative scales. And then uh, we slice dice the data based on, again, this is based on your affiliation data, like, you know, those commits, which organizations are they coming from? Uh, how many lines of code actually changed? Um, you know, who are the active contributors? Uh, like, uh, like in terms of diversity, how are those uh, commits spread out by time zones? Again, UTC timing. Uh, if you really want to filter for a particular organization, you can. So, you know, you can just simply apply a filter like that. And in this case, you will see uh, just a view for IBM uh, if you're just filtering for IBM, right, as an example. Um, you start looking into, you know, um, information around uh, uh, the authors, like who are the top authors uh, in that time period, like in, again, based on commits, lines of code added, removed, average files. You're also filtering that by organizational impact. Uh, you're looking at repo by repo, which are your most active repositories, which are your most active projects. Um, and again, this gives you a good handle on the velocity. And then also like, you know, uh, we get down into, you know, commit hash and like uh, the commit URL. So you can get as deep as uh, uh, possible, or you can, you know, look at it from our top down approach as well. However, you know, commits are great, but what about the efficiency, right? So um, yeah, there are pull requests coming in and you can have similar views on PRs, right? Like uh, as these contributions are coming in, and similarly, you can slice dice the data in terms of, you know, PRs, submitters, repositories over time, how these are doing. Uh, again, how many are open, how many are closed? Uh, you know, who are the top, uh, you know, submitters of this PRs and so on. But we are starting to now go into like, how are these PRs doing from an efficiency perspective? So we leveraged a lot of the best practices that were set by uh, chaos as a, uh, there's a big initiative there or a project there called metrics and a lot of specifications and best practices were provided there uh, on key metrics to measure, right? So if you're thinking about like, okay, um, PRs are great, but I want to start looking at like, what's the average lead time, right? Uh, to merge that PR, um, you know, what's your kind of moving average there? Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it happening more iteratively? Uh, if you start want to start looking at, you know, what your uh, timing on these is, right? Like average time these stay open. Um, you know, you can start looking at those distribution charts, like how exactly is the performance happening? right? Uh, this is healthy. The 95 percentile of open time is decreasing. That's actually a healthy pattern. You should not want it to go up and up and up. Um, interesting metrics to look at. Um, similarly, you know, if you wanted to just get into data like builds, right? So I'm going to go and use quite a few different projects because you can navigate and cross compare across projects as well. If I have to look at, okay, great, code came in, PRs are happening, approvals are happening. And if you're in the uh, get it land, you want to also look at like reviews and approvers. So I'm not gonna go into all those metrics, but uh, they are there. Uh, if you're looking at builds, you want to really understand like, okay, what's my job performance, right? How many jobs am I running? on a uh, monthly basis, quarterly basis, how many jobs succeeded, how many failed, how many unstable, how many got aborted, um, you know, are there like large uh, spikes like this happening into the system? This does not point to an anomaly. Uh, it could be normal. There might be a massive commit base came in or some uh, re-engineering done on, you know, or improvement done in terms of, you know, your uh, uh, CI infrastructure. Um, but again, this is interesting to data to look at and analyze, right? We start looking at like, okay, what are your primary, you know, 
jobs like and you know are they how are they trending upwards downwards the build duration of those jobs if these jobs are running for days maybe that's a good area for you to start optimizing these right um, similarly um, you know there are many more uh, metrics here if you're really looking at you know your registries and let me go on to another project here um, ajax foundry and if i want to track like okay how is my distribution doing and I want to start tracking it from you know, Docker Hub perspective, right? Like what are my top images? Again, this is within this time period. How is like, you know, the pools happening? And you can probably like, if you start trending this over like, um, you know, six months and a year, is this increasing, decreasing, right? Like uh, what are the top images that are getting pulled down? So it also points at an adoption. This is not a user pulling down. It could be a CI job pulling down your images, but you not start looking at like, okay, how are we actually performing outbound, right? In terms of the adoption. Now, again, Many more metrics for the technical consumers, for the consumers who are looking at the ecosystem. Um, you know, you might want to start looking at things like, um, you know, your Slack conversation. So if I go into, let's switch projects again uh, on the CNCF side, and I want to look at the entire project group and look into like, okay, um, let's look at Slack. Right, so a lot of projects on CNCF use shared Slack resources. Um, you know, again, you can put a lot of uh, um, uh, messages like who are the top uh, people who are the top participants in those official channels. We are not looking at peer to peer um, conversations. We are primarily focusing a lot on like you know the official channels which the projects want us to instrument and start taking a look at, um, you know, what are the topics in those channels? Like, what is the purpose of those channels? Where are people, what are people really discussing, right? What are they trying to solve? Um, there are uh, many areas where like, if I uh, switch back to uh, HX Foundry, I might be able to even look at uh, the same data, but in this case um, for Slack, uh, you, you know, there is a section here, many projects have, uh, you know, provided us some keywords to look at, right? So uh, you might definitely want to eliminate all the filler words, uh, but you want to look at like what's trending, what's not trending. Are there certain keywords you really want to track? Uh, you can actually start measuring, you know, uh, what's important, what are people talking about in those communities, right? Um, but as I said, uh, not everybody uses Slack. We had a similar implement implementation uh, for a project like Hyperledger, uh, where instead of Slack, um, they used Rocket Chat, right? So we tried to build similar uh, kind of you know data interpretations, regardless of the chat system you are using. Uh, you know who are the participants? What are your top reactions? What are the keywords you should be looking at, and whatnot? Uh, so this is again, if you're looking at collaboration, right? Uh, many projects are using uh, for email conversations groups.io, and there again, you can see like who your key participants are, which are your busiest mailing lists, where are these people participating from, where are those recent messages. So we are streaming in all these messages as well, and these are your most active mailing lists, right? This is an indication of how you know your you know your participation across the community is trending it's going up going down uh, why are those like if you have an underperforming mailing list why exactly right are there not important topics that are getting discussed how do you increase that okay um, I'll not go into every section like documentation. I think worth one good thing worth looking at is uh, you know earned media. So social media, we are it's still we are going to publish it in the next few weeks. But right now we have got earned media. So let me look at uh, CNCF one more time and look at like the earned media. So what do you start looking at under earned media? So things like mentions. Okay. So if you look across the board, where are your mentions happening? Uh, you know, and which are your social amplifications channel? Um, you know, what, what are your hotspots, right? This is kind of a United States view. Uh, but again, these are like where your content is getting mentioned, right? It's not just like where your users are, but where is your uh, content trending? 
um, you know, you can break it down by cities. You can look at like, you know, how that is trending international. Like you can look across the world. Uh, you can also look into like, you know, across the world where your, you know, content readers are, right? Like primarily, yeah, the US dominates most of it. But here you can also see like China is becoming a very big hotspot for CNCF in this example. Okay. Uh, you're looking at things like share of voice. Um, so again, a lot of these are like keywords based on what the projects want to track their share of voice. But if you had like one, this is slam dunk. Kubernetes will always be the 800 pound gorilla in the CNCF uh, group of projects. Uh, but again, if you look at project by project, right, which, which is your getting the most share of voice here, you are just comparing against other projects in your group, but you can also compare against proprietary tools, other open source projects uh, that are out there, right? So, and we are able to stitch this data. Uh, we have done a lot of partnership with the content aggregators to pull this in amount of information. Uh, how is your sentiment doing, right? How much is positive, neutral, negative? Uh, if you're putting in some key messages, how are they performing overall, right? And this could be like keywords based, key messages based, right? Um, how is your SEO traffic doing, right? How much of uh, traffic is coming to your site based on uh, organic, uh, you know, press releases or how much is it coming from documentation, you know, your web traffic versus total traffic. Um, so different ways to slice and dice the data to start looking at your impact, also looking at like how to improve that. Um, some good things to look at. I'm going to again switch back to another project here. Let's take the example of ONAP. <clears throat> Uh, you want to start using some of this data for voting, right? And again, this is more around uh, contribution data. So how do you do your TSC elections as an example, right? So uh, you could just be looking at code and you can see here, uh, you know, people with their uh, names and you know organizations that they're working on their email is not visible i see it because i'm a super admin in your cases you'll be seeing it without the emails but you could be looking at okay code is one criteria what about tickets right or people who create issues what about documentation uh, contributions right is that like uh, do you want to capture and see a holistic view uh, you know, across the board, what are the different parameters based on what you're going to do a voting? Like, who do you consider a top contributor? Is it just the person writing code or doing commits? Or is it a person who is making an impact across multiple areas, right? So we can add more data sources. You can export this data, use it for a lot of, uh, you know, election voting process as well. Another interesting thing to look at is uh, you can compare projects side by side. So if I start looking at, okay, let me look at like past three months and let's compare some like projects. So if I'm gonna, again, maybe Kubernetes is probably not a great choice because it's a big, super big project, but let's compare it against something like gRPC. Um, let's compare it against Prometheus. Um, uh, so these are kind of in the same family of cloud native projects. Um, again, you know, when you are looking at, you know, say three months, six months, uh, is it the number of commits? Yeah, it looks like it's trending down, but is it necessarily a flag? You should not draw interpretations from just the number of commits going up or down. Uh, you have to look around different set of metrics to gauge the health, right? So we are just providing you the raw metrics, but the analytics of whether a, a trend going upward or uh, or downward is pointing to health. Uh, a, a lot of analysis needs to go in there, right? So just if something is trending downward doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It could be actually be good, right? Um, so we have been working with these projects to get a set of like, what are the key metrics that are valuable to look at? But you can even go and, you know, uh, go across projects of a similar group. So I can say, okay, uh, let's look at uh, Kubernetes versus, uh, fabric project in Hyperledger, right? Um, let's see how that does, right? Completely different project, different ecosystem. Uh, how, how are we doing on those same set of metrics? Now, these are like very, very detailed. We are trying to build some high level views as well, though, so we can easily compare again, different timeframes per se, okay? Uh, so 
lot of things i would really encourage you to uh, check out all these uh, features in there um, and you know uh, check your projects in cases where you find like hey we don't have data um, it could be that we don't have the data source for uh, information to instrument in some cases uh, we might not support the data source that you know your project is uh, using so if you want us to support that you want us to get data from that all you need to do is like log a ticket on our jira system okay so i'm going to go back to my deck here okay and also want to talk about roadmap so what's coming next so i'm not going to be uh, able to demo all of this but uh, the next big feature uh, release that we are going to do in a few weeks is social media analytics very deep dive social media analytics around you know your twitter followers your linkedin um, posts how they are performing how you know who the who your followers are your facebook fans a type of content that's working not working images versus video versus text copy uh, where are those people uh, distributed are you gaining supporters are you losing supporters and what not right so this is coming very shortly um later half of the you know uh, q2 q3 onwards uh, uh, we are obviously adding more data sources that's going to happen on a regular cadence uh, you know all the ci systems is our next big uh, effort and also getting into google groups microsoft teams again we are taking this request from the projects where they feel the critical mass hit what are the key data sources they want to look at we are also adding event participation project by project training and certification uh, participation project by project events could be both virtual and physical so that's why like when i talk about metrics it's not just code that's code alone doesn't make your project it is the most important component but there are many other areas in the ecosystem uh, there's another um, view we are trying to stitch together which is essentially looking at the entire pipeline so think about like the core to uh, ship pipeline or even you know all the way from where you actually log an issue to the way you know some uh, contributor picks it uh, picks up the issue works on it issues a pull request a reviewer reviews the code merges it uh, and that particularly essentially is a maintainer it gets packaged into some build job the build job runs it's put uh, you know into some package management system the distribution happens so can you look at it end to end right and i think you will start to see this kind of an uh, in i won't say it's completely inverted funnel where you know a lot of uh, inbound will come in in terms of issues feature requests but over as you go through this funnel uh, you know it, the the people who are towards the later half of the funnel are essentially your gatekeepers they are the most important people in your community but we'll try to stitch this impact view end to end so you can start measuring different types of metrics on a plane okay um so opening up for questions and uh, before we go into more questions i just also wanted to give you uh, some highlights into some resources so if you really want to update your affiliations you can go to this my profile screen um, i'll show you how to do that there are like you know these are the links to the app uh, how to get connected stay connected with the newsletter you want to get support add data sources your project is missing something that's the place to go you have general questions come to us but i just wanted to show you one area where affiliations are done which is the self serve ui so just here this is my profile anybody who has a linux foundation id actually already has this so if you log in i am a developer i can see my code contributions across all these projects and if i wanted to say like hey i am contributing on behalf of the linux foundation or i am contributing as self and maybe my data isn't correct right this was like sourced from linkedin or whatever data we had on you know through third party systems so you have an ability to say hey you know what i don't really work here anymore this should be based on okay i am just as an example i change jobs at this point i was working at google and uh, i was a maintainer or a contributor and for this project during this time frame uh, you know my contributions should be uh, affiliated to google or it could be just affiliated to myself so this is a self serve um, uh, utility that every developer every contributor again 
contributions could be across the board they get to see and you can use this to update your profiles and once you update these in the leaderboards that you see in your um, insights dashboards they get automatically updated so that's why you know for us communities to scale we are providing this self service utility so let me stop there and open it up for questions Awesome. Great. Thank you so, so much, Shibra. Um, to everyone, if there's any questions, please uh, add them to chat or go in the q and I'm going to bring back that final slide so that we all can see that as reference with all of our links. Just give me one second here, but please go ahead and start dropping in some questions. One that I know comes up a lot, Shibra, that I'd um, love to address is, you know, how do we, how does a project get access? Is there a cost for projects and how can a, a project get these dashboards, you know, up and running for their for their project. Yeah. So uh, for uh, the, this tool is provided for all Linux Foundation projects. There is no gating per se. Uh, the easiest way to uh, get your project onboarded is to just uh, create a support ticket in our Jira system. The link of that is in our deck, and our technical product manager Sachin here, who's on the call, will pick it up and help you with the onboarding. The way the projects get onboarded is we give you a set of Google Sheets where you need to provide us the data sources that you want uh, this project uses, like what those endpoints are that we should be instrumenting. Many times we ask you for like, okay, what are the keywords that you want to look at, right? So provided the data we can on, we have a lot of automation, all these dashboards get generated uh, you know, automatically, you will be able to onboard a project in a couple of days, right? It doesn't take more than that. Uh, from a cost perspective, like there is no hard cost here like this is being managed through your membership support or the support of the membership that is done through the projects but it's one service that's provided kind of to all projects right like uh, yeah an individual doesn't have to pay for that what we do have is there are some features like the ecosystem metrics because the members are primarily funding them uh, those are gated for you know employees or all our contributors who are working with these supporting companies or if these contributors or people are part of uh, formal governance committees of these projects like the toc the marketing committees the legal committees the board uh, but for the technical metrics, like anybody in the world can come and see that. But this whole thing is funded essentially out of the membership support that we get from these projects. So it's like, uh, but again, that's primarily like infrastructure costs that are shared by these projects. But other than that, there is no expense per se. Great, thank you. Um, one other question that I saw come up through the Q&A was around, um, you know, the understanding which uh, data sources are connected for their project. How does a project understand what the data source, uh, which data sources are already connected for their project and be able to get you know, other things added as, as needed? Yeah, great question. So if you don't mind unsharing, I can actually show you. It's, uh, you can see it in the tool itself. Um, yeah, so if I share my screen and uh, there are a couple of ways to look at it. Uh, so the number one thing is uh, just look at your project. And um, if you're looking at your project group, um, the quickest way to look at it is, um, you know, uh, one is like, you know, data source is not configured. You can see here for pages like our documentation, there's no data source configured or there's no data here. But also if you look at your summary and you're going through these main dashboards, you can see here we support get it github now your code could be not be on get it then you don't care however there could be a project let's assume you know you are in ci cd and you see here jenkins we support jenkins but it's not configured for this project okay why because my team doesn't have the endpoint for jenkins to instrument so if you just create a jira ticket here and give us the endpoint we can put in the you know enable this instrumentation or registry information right if you if your registry right now is in docker hub and you know you have a docker hub endpoint or the actual docker hub account we should be looking at we don't have that information if you provide it to us like we can enable this like super quick does that uh, and again this is the same thing like every section you go you can see like uh, you know if it is supported, yes. If it is not supported, let's say issue management, Jira, 
GitHub issues, Bugzilla. Now this project uses GitHub. These are the only ones we support. Tomorrow, let's say we add a third or fourth system, which is GitLab issues, right? So it's not supported yet, but like if we don't, if you don't have then uh, let's say, you know, you are using Bugzilla and we, and you're not seeing a dashboard for Bugzilla, that means we don't have your Bugzilla information. What is the URL, what is the host, what is the port, and what is the key to look at, right? So that information, if the project's lead can provide us in a Jira ticket, we can set it up right away. Awesome, great. So we might have time for just one more question here. If uh, there are any in, Kind of particular that have come up as we've talked through the demo uh, and that maybe we haven't addressed in, in Q and A. Oh, here's a great one. Um, how, let me go ahead and bring this up from our Q and A that we addressed earlier. Um, how does a project or, or how does anyone uh, identify the state of a project's maturity? Is that something that can be understood in the insights dashboards or is that something that's coming on the roadmap? Yeah, from uh, what we are, it's it's a roadmap item for us. But what we are trying to do is like look at um, certain best practices and like start creating some maturity indexes. Uh, this uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, I would say subjective because like how do you define maturity? Now there are projects which have been there for 15, 20 years, and they are adopting some of these best practices. Uh, like the best practice could be like you know your PR efficiency could be a best practice. Uh, you know your contributions like uh, let's say you know more iterative contributions versus you know one big bang contribution of a million lines of code. Uh, but again, there are projects you know you can't enforce it as a hard rule uh, because there might be some projects the communities work that way right but in general iterative uh, contributions are a best practice right so what we are planning to do is uh, we'll come with a set of specifications and uh, we'll, we'll be creating indexes maturity indexes on different areas right um, and uh, there we can actually post that maturity index but you have to take it with a pinch of salt because uh, you know it's just a recommendation it's not an absolute hard rule because project communities can differ in their best practices from here or there. So it's really based on best practices. So yeah, like, you know, from a maturity perspective, um, we don't have a set of indexes defined today. That's a short-term project for us. Great, thank you. So I think this is, is uh, we are at time at this point. Um, if there are any other questions that come up, uh, please, you know, feel free to reach out. Let me just bring that slide back up to uh, for everyone to see here. If you know, feel free. Please, as next steps, uh, go in and update your affiliations. Uh, explore the insights dashboards for your specific projects and um, and others. Please do follow us. Uh, stay connected on our newsletter because we will be sending out. You know, all of the, the new data sources that Shubra is talking about and other features, we'll be sending out updates for, for that through, through the newsletter. And of course, if you have any questions or need support on getting started, you know, reach out to us through our support channels as well as asking questions. And we will be sending in follow up, uh, we will be sending out an email with our recorded webinar as well as if there are any questions that, you know, come up in at the end here that we might not have addressed. And if there's any feedback from, from all of you who have attended our first webinar, we would love to, to hear that too. So thank you all again for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day.